Hello and welcome to a discussion on process costing. After viewing this video, you will be able to state the purpose of process costing and define an equivalent unit. You will compute the cost per equivalent unit and use this to value work in process and finished goods inventory. You will also properly consider the impact of spoilage. Process costing is used to determine the cost of one unit that is then used to value inventory and cost of goods sold. Process costing is used when all units are made the same. When all units are made the same, one average cost is used to value inventory. Let's look at a simple example. In this illustration, the company incurred a total of $20,000 in product costs to make three complete units and four units that are half complete. The company must use an average cost to make each unit. An average cost is sufficient because all units are made the same and therefore should cost the same. The question becomes how to compute the average cost. Should the total cost be divided by the three complete units and ignore the work in process? If so, the three units will get more cost than was actually incurred just for those units and the cost per unit will be high. Should the total cost be divided by the number of pieces? If so, the cost per piece does not consider the cost that is going to have to be incurred to finish the units that are in work in process and is low. Should the total cost be divided by the total number of units that would be complete if all partially completed units were put together as if they were finished? The key question is how do you treat the partially completed units when calculating the cost for one? Process costing uses the last scenario and computes a cost per equivalent unit and then values inventory in terms of equivalent units. The three that were finished are added to the two that would be finished if all parts were considered together as whole units to get to five units. In this case, there are five equivalent units, three finished plus the four at 50% to equal two more. A company that mass produces will have partially complete units at the end of the period. The partially complete units must also be considered when determining the average cost of each unit. Partially completed units are converted to total equivalent units. The number of units that would have been produced if all units were totally finished, given the total product costs used during the period, are referred to as equivalent units. Accountants use a common format to compute the amount of equivalent units for each type of product cost. This table computes equivalent units, however, quantities begin with full units. The top part accounts for all the units that were part of the manufacturing process during the period. The three beginning inventories are units that were not finished at the end of the last period. These units are the first to be completed during the current period. The 33 units started in production is added to the beginning units to get the total units of 36 to be accounted for during this period. The bottom part shows what happened to the 36 units in the current period. The total output units is equal to the total input units of 36. Beginning inventory is the same quantity for the top input portion and the bottom output portion because they are the same units. Beginning inventory is finished first before other units are started. The 33 units started during the period were either started and finished this period or are not yet finished and still on the production line at the end of the period. The beginning inventory that is finished first and started and completed units are moved to finished goods and valued as finished goods. Ending inventory that is on the production line is valued as work in process. The quantities on the left are full units. Management estimates how far along in the process the beginning and ending units are at the end of the period and equivalent units are valued using the percent that was completed during the period. Multiply the number of full units on the left by the percent complete to get the equivalent units of work for the period for this part of the schedule. Started and completed are always 100% finished in the current period. There are two methods of process costing, weighted average and FIFO. 
Weighted average assumes that all beginning inventory was all completed during the current period and always uses 100% for the beginning inventory equivalent units. FIFO uses the percent of the work that was done only during the current period. We will discuss the two minute methods further in a few minutes. Total product costs are divided by the equivalent units for each category of product cost to get a cost per equivalent unit. This is multiplied by equivalent units to value inventory at the end of the period. The cost of inventory on the production line and the cost added during the period are included in the cost of inventory when using the weighted average method. The cost of materials is added to the cost of conversion, which is direct labor and manufacturing overhead, to get a total cost per equivalent unit of 11147 this cost per unit is used to value inventory. The equivalent unit stated on the schedule of equivalent units is used to value inventory. Full units are not used to value inventory. Each equivalent unit is multiplied by the cost per equivalent unit to compute the ending value of inventory. This is done both for work in process and finished goods. The equivalent units on the work in process row labeled ending work in process is valued using the cost per unit for each type of product cost. The equivalent units on the beginning inventory row and the started and completed row are valued to determine the cost of inventory that was moved to finished goods. All the product costs are either in work in process still on the production line or were moved to finished goods at the end of the period. This is an example of the weighted average method. There are three journal entries that must be made to record process costing. All entries are made for the total amount. The first entry is to record the cost incurred during the period. All costs added to the production line are added to work in process with a debit. Conversion expense represents direct labor plus manufacturing overhead. The second entry records the cost of the units that are completed and moved to finished goods. This cost is computed when finished goods is valued. The value of finished goods is added to the finished goods account and removed from work in process. The last entry is to remove the bad products from work in process. Bad products are taken off of the production line and disposed of and this cost must be expensed in the period it is incurred. The cost is either recorded to loss on spoilage or directly to cost of goods sold. The loss is also reported as cost of goods sold. Spoilage will be discussed later in this video. There are really three methods for recording inventory costs using process costing. It's the same three that are used to value inventory under other methods, LIFO, FIFO, and weighted average. This video will not discuss the LIFO method. Weighted average is the most common, followed by FIFO. The only difference in these two methods is how the equivalent units for beginning inventory is computed. Weighted average assumes all work done on beginning inventory is done in the current period and equivalent units is always 100% of full units. FIFO counts only the percentage of work done during the current period. Weighted average is used when the cost from one period to the next is fairly consistent. FIFO is used when the cost from one period to the next generally fluctuates. The cost per unit is computed differently for weighted average and for FIFO. Weighted average includes the beginning inventory dollars and the total cost because it includes 100% of the units. FIFO does not include beginning inventory cost in the cost per unit and later adds the total beginning inventory dollars to the cost of finished goods. All completed units are not good product that can be sold to customers. Products that can't be sold are referred to as spoiled. Normal spoilage is the percentage of units produced that is expected to spoil. It is normal for spoilage to occur due to human error or dissipation of chemicals and materials. The cost of normal spoilage is considered to be an expected cost of producing good units. 
Abnormal spoilage is spoilage greater than what was expected. This cost is not considered an expected cost of producing good units and therefore it must be expensed in the period it is incurred. The type of manufacturing process determines how a company must account for the cost of spoilage. A continuous process cannot be stopped without spoiling all the goods in the process. Continuous processing is generally used for food products or medical drugs. There is no planned inspection point. A discrete process has obvious points in the process where production can be stopped and inspected. Discrete processing is normally used for products that are manufactured in stages and there is a planned inspection point. The combination of normal or abnormal and continuous or discrete determines how the cost of spoilage is accounted for. If it is normal and continuous, a zero is always used for equivalent units. Putting a zero in the spoilage row gives a lower total of equivalent units and a lower equivalent units divided into the cost gives a higher cost per equivalent unit. A higher cost per equivalent unit spreads the cost of spoilage to all the good units. This is okay because it is considered to be a cost of producing good units. All other combinations use the percent complete when the bad product is discovered. Bad products are usually discovered at an, ins at an inspection point. Spoiled units are removed from the production line and disposed of and reduce the number of units that are started and completed and moved to finished goods. Let's continue our previous example and assume 10% of total units are expected to be spoiled as part of the continuous production process. Two additional lines are added to the equivalent unit schedule to account for the cost of spoilage. This is an example of a normal and continuous process and normal spoilage has zero equivalent units. Total spoilage is four and the one unit higher than normal spoilage is assigned to abnormal spoilage. The bad units were discovered at the end of the process and therefore 100% of the cost in them are assigned to the equivalent units. Spoilage is accounted for by the two additional lines on the output schedule. Valuing spoilage is done the same way that other equivalent units are valued. The cost per equivalent unit is multiplied by the equivalent units on the schedule. Normal spoilage is added to the cost of finished goods. Abnormal spoilage is expensed in the period it is incurred. After viewing this video, you should be able to state the purpose of process costing and define an equivalent unit. You should be able to compute the cost per equivalent unit and use this to value work in process and finished goods inventory. You should also be able to properly consider the impact of spoilage, both normal and abnormal. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com. The practices you learn will give you examples of each of the concepts discussed in this video. Then work the practice test to verify your understanding. Go ahead and write out the answers and then check your answers to the answers and explanations provided. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is much appreciated.